Today we're going to talk about Canon's brand new 10 to 20 millimeter f4 lens. Now you might be asking, why do you need a 10 millimeter lens? Well, this is why. One of our favorite uses of the super wide angle lens is to get stadium photos. Last year we shot photos with our stadium with this 8 to 15 uh, EF lens adapted for the RF mount. And here you can see at 15 millimeters the distortion of the stadium. What we did was we shot a photo of the stadium like this and then corrected the distortion in post. So first of all, here's at 15, 14, 12, where you start to see the edge of the frame come in, 10, and 8. So as you can see, in this 8 to 15 lens, really to be a full frame usable shot, it's at 14 millimeters, which just isn't enough especially with the amount of distortion that you're adding. All right, so here we are with the 11 to 24 EF lens. And here's a photo at 24, 18, 14, 12, and 11. And I always feel like with this lens, you know, 12 is kind of the sweet spot as for as wide as you really want to go with it. The amazing thing is, is that this building is actually holding up this lens. Right now we're going to show what it looks like with the Canon RF 15 to 35 lens. First of all, I'm going to start here at 35. 24, 20, and 15 millimeters. Now, 15 millimeters looks pretty good, but what bothers me is that the scoreboard, it's cut in half because it's just not wide enough. And there, you are starting to see, if you look at the edges, the bottom edge of the field, that distortion. That's why this lens is not ideal to get our overall shot. All right, and here we are with the 10 to 20, and I'm gonna start at 20, 15 millimeter, 14, 12, 11, and 10 millimeter. And as you can see at 10 millimeters, look how straight the lines on the field are and how much straighter the horizon is. We actually still have the full scoreboards in, in the frame and that's gonna be really usable. That's amazing. I am excited to use this next season. The real question is what makes this lens different? And that's the fact that it's a rectilinear lens. What that means is, well, normally with a wide angle lens, you have distortion, right? Especially on the edges of the frame where lines curve. With a rectilinear lens, it corrects for that distortion. So straight lines stay straight. All right, before we get into some real world application of how we've used this lens so far, there's something I wanna talk about and that is lens profile correction. So all the images that you've seen so far have been with that lens profile correction on and I'm gonna show you what it looks like with those corrections off. So here in Adobe Camera Raw, if you look over on the optics dropdown, this check mark, use profile corrections. So it automatically detects which lens that you're using and the profile correction is on by default. If you click that off, you'll notice a couple things. One, you'll notice that there's a little bit of vignetting. Two, the lines aren't quite as straight. You see how that straightens the lines out. And then three, you'll see that it crops in a little bit with the profile correction on. I don't know exactly what's happening, but I feel like Canon is expecting you to use this lens profile correction. And so when it corrects it, it puts it at 10 millimeter. Maybe it's shooting a little bit wider and with that profile correction on, it goes into 10 millimeter. I'm not exactly sure, but that's kind of the difference that you're gonna see with and without that lens profile correction on. Okay, here's another example. So this is from a basketball game. I'm just in the locker room. Again, lens profile correction on. With that off, you see a really heavy vignetting here. And uh, there's not so many lines that are absolutely needing to be straight horizontally. So you don't see much of a difference there, but you can see a pretty big difference with that vignetting and a little bit that it zooms in by clicking that on and off. One more example, this is at the basketball arena looking straight up at the scoreboard from underneath. And right now, profile correction is on. These lines off to the side are really straight. Take that off. This will show you a little bit more of that curve. You can see the curve in those lines right here on both sides. With that lens profile correction on, it straightens that out. Again, it's gonna crop in a little bit, but those are the main differences you're gonna see with the lens profile correction on or off. All right, now some real world application. I've used this lens so far for three different basketball games. I'm gonna show you examples of two of them here. The first game I just used for pregame, 
overalls during the game, and then post game. The next game, I used it as a remote camera. So let's dive right into these photos and I'll show you what we're talking about. So with most of these, I kept the lens profile correction off. I really liked the vignetting that came with these. You can see the difference right here with it on and off. Personally, I love vignetting. I love how it keeps your eye contained within the frame, but it doesn't always work, especially with this lens. Sometimes it's a little heavy handed. So here's some pregame photos. Again, all of these are with lens profile correction off. You can see the difference here with it on. Here's pregame huddle. I'm actually laying on the ground underneath. Profile correction on, profile correction off. Again, I like the vignetting. Same with here. And these are all shot at 10 millimeter. So now we'll go into 20. Here's an overall during the game at 20 millimeters. So you can kind of see the difference here. Here's a better example of 10 millimeter and 20 millimeter. So that's the range that you're gonna get between these two images. Here's another shot of a timeout. That's at 10 millimeter. Some post game high fives. That's at 10 millimeter. So with this particular image, I actually used profile correction because without it, the vignetting's too heavy for me. I kind of liked that lighter look, so I took it off of that one. Some post game locker room dancing. So now let's talk about the second game where I used it as a remote. So here it is under the basket, under the pad. This is at 10 millimeter. And again, here's the image without and with the lens profile correction, just so you can see the difference. You're gonna notice that you can see the top of the pad on here, and you're gonna see the foot and the knees of the cameramen that are next to you. So it's super wide. It is really wide under there. Now you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just put the camera out a little bit further so you don't get the pad in the shot? Well, you can't do that. The reality is that camera is right at the threshold and you can't move that camera out anymore for a couple of reasons. Number one, safety of the athletes. You don't want anything sticking out that could cause any kind of rolled ankle or any kind of harm. Two, I wanna protect my gear. I don't want anything happening to it. So you have to make sure that that lens is tucked in. And because this lens is super wide, you're gonna get that pad. But the cool thing is with this, I think you can crop it and get some really nice panoramas. This one, I actually kept the lens profile correction on. You can see it off here, down at the bottom of the screen, you can see how the lines curve a little bit. That lens profile correction straightens that out. So you can crop that pad out. If it's a really big game and you're wanting to capture the whole environment and the, the feeling of what's going on there, this is a great use for it. Otherwise, I'll probably stick with my 15 to 35 under the hoop. But for really big games, I'm super excited about it. So initial takeaways, from using this lens. I absolutely love it. It's super light, especially compared to the EF 11 to 24. This thing weighs like half the amount and it's about half the size. So this thing is great. If you don't need anything wider than 15 millimeter, I would not get this lens. 15 millimeter on this lens and your 15 to 35 is exactly the same. So if you don't need it, I wouldn't get it. But if you need something a little bit wider, this is your guy. This is an awesome lens to have and I would strongly recommend it. Something else to consider, this is an F4 lens. So if you need to let in more light, you need a 2.8, again, this isn't your lens, I would stick with the 15 to 35. But if F4 doesn't bother you, bumping up your ISO a little bit or dropping your shutter speed, great option to have.